What's up, slappers? That's a daily 504 reference if you know it. But otherwise, I'll say welcome to Stephen Johnson Stocks. $15,000 month on top of a $10,000 month last month. You're going to say, how did I do this? It was three things. One, I can't control as a hot market. Two things that I cannot control. Can, 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 can control. State and understanding the market and the variables. State is... Working with Sam Daghash, links below if you want to know more about him. But basically, he taught me how to uh, meditate. A lot of Joe spends a lot of quantum, a lot of asking the universe for things. And I was meditating, trying to align myself, body and mind, on what I want to achieve, how I want to achieve it. Not just now, but also in the future. And it sounds crazy, but I asked for wealth and a, and a pretty fit girlfriend. And I've just got both in the last three months, so I'm pretty happy. And... Learn about him in the description link below. Uh, it sounds crazy, but if you ask the universe for stuff and you meditate and you align your heart and body and mind with the quantum field, somehow it seems to give you it. It also helps if you study Tim Sykes, the challenge trading material, for four years before you ask the universe for it. You tend to get it a little bit faster when you put some work in as well. Onto that, the trading aspect I've just got much better at. It all links back to the Trader Checklist DVD by Tim Sykes. He explains all the different variables. The only difference between then and now is I've got such a better grasp of how the variables all align and move and, me and the mechanics of them in the head. So how does volume really uh, impact a stock? How do the fundamentals really weigh against the other variables of like the pre-market, the float, the long-term chart, uh, the, the fundamentals, the SEC filings, the potential dilution, uh, the, the environment of the market, fucking if it's coronavirus, what sector it's in. I really just learned to measure all of those variables to better determine how high a stock can go, when it should fall, how far it should fall, and when I should show, when I should cover, when I should buy, when I should sell. And I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. Peace. So I started off the month with a $5,000 account. I wanted to get it to $10,000. I ended up more than tripling it, which is quite crazy when I think about it. I know you got it to 20 so it's $15,000 net, minus about $2,000 for borrow fees. I think maybe it's just, just under 2000 And ultimately, that's the price of doing business. Um, with this broker, and there's a link, a referral link, if you want to sign up with them. Like I, I recommend them, of course, because I use them nonstop. Um, I recommend I can triple my account because I have the hard-to-borrow stocks. I can borrow them. I mean, at a cost, but as, as I say, that's the price of doing business. I can borrow these, and if you know how to trade them, you can have crazy return on investments, like nearly 300% in a month. Where do you think probably people who invest in the SPY get about 20% in the year? It's not uh, some crazy secret. I'm being very public about it. It's, it's extremely possible with the right broker and with the right knowledge. It's extremely possible to do this. And it's good to know that the, the lower and the heart to borrow rate, that was kind of a pain point, the seven times borrow rate. They explained to me why it, it was seven times, but they've, they've gone on to, to reduce it to five times, which is cool, and options is cut as well if if that's your jam. Uh, under the Excel, in April, I, it was a 10K month with no with like four red days. May, there was no red days because I altered the strategy a little bit that I've got with, with a very simple change just to take small starters and then if I'm wrong I'll just cut them uh, and then uh, if I'm wrong on a trade I'll only lose like 100 bucks something like that with bigger size maybe 200 250 which I can then like easily make back on another trade so like to have a red day I need to get like four red trades and no green trades at all um, which makes it very difficult to have a red day by taking these light starters and I was thinking what's the better strategy well obviously strategy in May of I, I still did this in April like starting in with size smaller size but like I really perfected it in May like really getting a good starter being patient not taking too much size on the starter and now that this strategy works I mean me average win is 765 where in April it was like 800 and something but ultimately I made more in May than I did in April, so with this strategy, it's and I had no red days, so with this strategy, it's a bit safer, so I can try and size up, but that doesn't mean I'll make more money this month. If the market's not as hot, I'll just not. I might 
may even be a red month, but I just I can't see that happening. But it might be like five thousand, ten thousand. We just have to see. PRTY was definitely one of the funner shorts. It was the last short of the month, and it was when fundamental and technical analysis really came together. I'm still improving at looking at the the bonds and warrants and debt and stuff like that. Not the debt, but the bonds, the warrants, the dilution. But I still managed to put two sides of the coin together here, which is what I like. So with PRTY, Party City Hall Corp is a party goods retailer in North America that operates owned and franchise locations in the US. They're basically an international provider of party goods. But the party seems to be over because the stock was in the 12 and it's it's been as low as, as the 50 cents. So it's really not doing well as a company. And the first thing that clicked and came to mind for me, and I hope it clicked and came to mind for you, is there's not many parties right now <laughs> because of coronavirus. So the party company is not going to be having much fun, right? Because it's gone from the 12s to the 50 cents. And it was actually doing bad before coronavirus happened. So I think it's kind of the final nail in the coffin that it wasn't, it was struggling as a company. And then we stopped having parties altogether. So, I mean, if you look, it's obviously the floats 100 million. It was valued at 12. So, I mean, that makes it a billion dollar company. Now it's roughly worth about 130 million based on the, the market value. And you just have to kind of look at the finances to confirm that what the stock chart is saying is reflected in its cash situation. And I can go on Yahoo Finance. It's really easy to see that. In 16, we made 120 million. 17, it made 215 million. 18, it made 123 million. 19, it had its first red year in a while, and it lost half a million. And that was before coronavirus. So if it lost 500 million and then the party stopped, it's like it's like double fucked. Do you know what I mean? So the question then becomes, why is it up 100%? Because we had this this gap up from the one dollars ultimately to the two dollars and it didn't really make sense and if you look at the chart and we check Yahoo Finance we can quickly see here a distressed retailer Party City may cut debt with bond deal Party City revamps debt and will raise new capital Party City shares rose on Friday after the chain restructured its debt and said it would raise $100 million of new capital. So that's all you really need to know. The company is kind of hemorrhaging and losing money, and it's not much of a party anymore. And, and there, will never, there will never be a good party. I mean, this company, if it was filmed before coronavirus, it's, it's never going to have a party. That's very good. Again, I mean, the only way I can see this company surviving is if this somehow managed to create a drug that makes you high as a kite while, cu while curing coronavirus that saves the world while making them high on drugs, which would be a fantastic party and it would be a global party and the company would be resurrected and saved. Mighty. Everything is just obvious that this company is destined and doomed for failure, which gave me more conviction to just not be like a lot of shorts are like sh dipping rips or like short the rip, cover the dip, short the rip, cover the dip. I was more like build into a short, have conviction, cover at the bottom. And I was covering into the wash because I was like, all right, it's gone from like two to 130. I was only in from like 180, 170 to 130. But I mean, I'm, I'm pretty positive I still took about tw 12 to 14 percent, even just averaging into a winner. And uh, the party may be over for them. But while I do this kind of research, fundamental and technical, the party's just beginning for me. And I hope it begins for you, but no drugs. Now, if you want 
to play Gavin Crafts, you can play the low float high volumes with experience, but you really, really have to follow the rules. And it's the first day of June and wanted to get off to a good start, missed a couple of the rules and I paid for it. And it's going to take us a few days, if not the week to make back the losses. So I want to be very clear on these rules because had I documented this earlier, I might have followed the rules myself. But SFED, it's a, it's a lowish float, high volume, but it never closes at its highs. Pixie, low float, trades high volume, never closes at its highs. It always has this gap spike, comes down, gap spikes, come down. SFED, gaps has a bit more of a spike traditionally because every stock has its own personality or it will run and give it all back off. Here it did was a less so of a spike. I'm 24 million, so quite, quite a high level of volume. Again, Pixie as well, it needs to trade a good, I mean, this is the day I traded Pixie, and the, the last time I traded like 15 million gap spike failed. This is the day I traded SFED on the 20th of May. Prior to that, it kind of ran on 24 million and ran to the fours and come back down. Now, the key differentiator between SFED and Pixie, I, I played them both differently. Pixie, I should have played more conservatively. I, I kind of got away admittedly on that one, and it's one that I need to remember and print the chart out to remember the mistake. I think I might print those out tonight. But with SFET, you, you got the same high volume, but because of the move, and I'm going to talk about the move happening early and the move happening late. Yeah, the move happened very early. It happened at 4 o'clock in the morning. You see some volume comes through, but you've got a lot of, it's like poker. When you're playing poker and you're the dealer, you can take extra size and you've got an advantage because you've seen what other people have done first. And with SFED, I could see that it had popped, couldn't hold its highs, lower high, double top, head and shoulders pattern around the 160s. I think I'll, I'll short that. I think it's on a downward trend towards the market open. And then when the market does open, as of now, it's not traded huge volume. But the volume did start to come in. I thought, look, it's 3 million, 3 million in terms of float. I think we've traded about a million and a half, 2 million pre. I think there's a good chance the volume will come in. You might get a bit of a push, but it might should work out for a good reshort. So, and that's how you've got to think. You've got to think like, look, I've got advantage. The news has come out. It's not reacting, but it is low float, highish volume. So expect some level of volatility at some point between nine and ten. Well, nine thirty and ten, ten thirty, even even nine twenty, nine ten, nine fifteen, nine twenty. You can't you can't get these pushes to the open. But I, I followed the trend down, recognizing the head and shoulders, covered at the wash, and then I was like, oh, there should be some volume here. We got half a million through, which is decent. It's not really gonna catapult the stock to break new highs and smash the 170s, but it, as expected, it, it reclaims some of that lost momentum in the 150s, 160s. You've got the, you, you've got the, the weakness, which you can see in this little crack here, where it's not really accelerating off. You've got this kind of double top, top and top Sierra 1016, 1017 compared to the top at 953. And it's a and it's a fade back down and I was covering around this area. So took two trades, made about seven, eight hundred on the first and then four hundred on the second. But Pixie's very different. Pixie, the news came out or it picked up momentum at 903. And in this case, you're not the dealer. You don't know what other traders have done. You've just got this rocket. Here you know what other traders have done. You can see the volumes not really took off, although it might come in later. And some of the volumes already been exhausted pre-market. Well, with Pixie, none of the volumes been exhausted. You don't know what people are doing because the news has just come up at 905. And one of the worst things you can ever do is take a short at 9, 905, 910 on a first screen day. You can do it on a first screen day when the news came out kind of the night before, but you can't do it when the news just comes out because that's when everyone gets excited. That's when people just short blindly and get squeezed, especially on these stocks with some huge range. You can go from 6 to 17 or 5 to 16 or 8 to 26. So for here, you're always looking for around 10.30. And I'm sure I said this in the last month's videos as well. Uh, you're looking at about 10.30, 11. And let's see if you can get these double tops. 9.30 is too early, too early to short. Let it come down. If you miss it, you miss it. When you get this field breakout at 10.05, again, it's a bit early for me. I like to look like 10.30, 10.45. Uh, you've got this lower high. You've got this head and shoulders. You've got your short down there. But more, it's more like around 10.11, 11.45. 11 
you've got this little curve up, and when it starts to fail, you're thinking, right, look, do you know what it is? I've got a short 14 risk in, 15, um, but your downside is 7. So, I mean, it's risking a dollar to make like 7 or $8, 7 to 1 risk reward. BFF were both kind of stocks where I'm trying to play the first red day and I'm trying to get a grips with it. So BFF is a wheat company that's went from the, the threes to the sixes. I mean, recently it's, it's had this kind of multi-month breakout from the fours, to be honest. It's got up to the sixes, so it's not, a, it's not really a huge increase, to be honest. Maybe it's only up about 30% or 50% from the fours to the sixes. It's not up like 80, 90, 100. And it's staggered over a few days, so I can kind of forgive myself for missing this, not missing it, but for it not being a fabulous first red day. I mean, the way it played is we've got constant, um, this constant kind of run up from the threes to the sixes, and it closes in the 586s. We get the first red day, and you think it fundamentals don't look that great to me, so. I shorted a little bit, uh, was expecting maybe a little bit of a push into the resistance and just took a little bit of profits and that was it. CLSN was more the short that I expected more from because it was from the one to the sixes again though I don't like this stair stepping up. I, I need to really remember to look for this blowout exhaustion, the big candle and then the gap down. Because what we got is like a, a stair step three days up from, from the 150s to the well, actually, it was only the 150s to the threes, so what's that? It's 100%, but it's 100% of our three days. So again, like this doesn't really fit the pattern that I should be looking for. I want to see a big volume exhaustion, which you kind of got, yeah, but I, but I didn't get the big blow off top green day. And I think that's where this could have gone wrong in retrospect. And I wouldn't have even played this in hindsight, but if I was to play it, You've got the close around here in the, in the 305s. You've got the short in the resistance and cut it when it goes up. I mean, there's no need to be, I was shorting this and chasing it up and uh, all the shorts are underwater. There's no need to do that. I also just want to thank Tango Vega, a former socks to trade pro student uh, who has cooked up a storm for me by really helping me go through the fundamentals. I will link somewhere to his Twitter profile or something in the bio if you want to contact him. You might not forgive us for this, but fuck it. Uh, he's really taught his in-depth look at the fundamentals, how to read them, how to spot the dilution, how to check the ball runs, and how to understand the basic fundamentals of a company, which I was more technical analysis before. Now I'm learning both, and I think, honestly, I know you guys are saying I'm underplaying these 10K months and 15K months, and I should be super happy with them. Um, I am somewhat happy with them. I am pleased, don't get us wrong. I've had moments in the shower where I've just started crying. Um, I've been running around the marina and it's just hit us, and I've started crying because I just have so much gratitude and, and happiness for the, for the, for the, it's like the relief that it's finally happened. Um, and I've cried tears listening to music thinking, thank God, it's finally happened. Because I always knew it would. I always had this relentless drive inside, this relentless, persistent thoughts from morning to night and know that I can get this. And now that I'm starting to get it and it's happening, it's like relief that I'm not fucking crazy. That it's not just all a big lie and I'm the fucking core of the joke. I'm just relieved. Um, in that I see these whiz kids all making it, but some ordinary fucking dude can make it too. And if that rings a bell to you right now, then you can do it too, with the work, and honestly with the education as well, you need both, in the market experience. So yes, I want you to know that it feels fucking fantastic to make the money, but also it's gonna feel even more fucking fantastic when I'm hitting 50K months, so I'm working harder than ever to get there. And I will get there, because I now know that I'm not crazy. I now know that that internal driving voice inside my fucking heart, soul, body and mind is the truth.
and I'm going to pray to that fucking universe. I'm going to meditate and I'm going to reach that highest frequency. And I'm going to say, give me it because I fucking am asking for it. <laughs> God bless. God bless. Love yous. Can't wait to see us get a bit further on and, and, and get to where I am. And if you haven't watched Michael Jordan, The Last Dance, watch it. It's inspiring as fuck.